A Rome icon. Learn more right after this. Your life is filled with opportunities to show the world you can take charge. It's waking up each day with a mission. It's working each day toward a goal. It's choosing to rise. It's charging forward with a purpose. It's changing the course of your life and taking charge of your future. If you're ready to be a Take Charger, enroll at Georgia Highlands College today. Welcome to Community Watch. Right. Doc. Hey. How you doing? I'm doing great, but we're talking about one of your shows. This is one of your shows. Now, you say that, I'm not sure what you're saying. Well, because you introduced me to, I guess, in, in the location we're going to talk about. Yeah. I didn't know anything about it. You yeah. introduced this to me. So, and I know, and you've done a lot of things there over the years with your poetry and readings and things. So I know this is something that is very... I love their sandwiches, but I know you have now, a very personal... Now, we're talking about Schroeder's, Schroeder's, and John Schroeder's going to be our guest. Yes. And I am thinking, without without specifically revealing our ages... Your age. I mean, I'm fine with mine. But yeah. Um, you were probably a teenager uh, oh, yeah. when I first... <laughs> <laughs> went to Schroeder's, I'm guessing. Probably so. Yeah. When I first moved here. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but we are talking about, um, and, and you called... Schroeder's you called, is called, an, yes, I, yes, yes, an icon. Yes, icon. Uh, but it has been part of Rome, an important part of Rome. Yes. For, for a long time. Yeah, still so, is. Uh, and John Schroeder recently retired, so uh, that gives us occasion to talk. Plus, he has a lot of free time now. Yeah. Uh, should be a great show, an entertaining show. John Schroeder is our guest. He'll be joining us right after this. Please don't go away. One forty five over ninety two. One eighty over one eleven. I had a heart attack, a cardiac arrest, and then a stroke. This is what high blood pressure looks like. You might not feel its symptoms, but the results from a heart attack or stroke are far from invisible or silent. Get back on your plan or talk with your doctor to create an exercise, diet, and medication plan that works for you. Go to loweryourhbp.org. If I would have followed a treatment plan, I would not be in this situation. Welcome back to Community Watch. We are very proud to have with us today Mr. John Schroeder. Welcome. Thank you. Glad to be here. So, uh, retirement. Yes, sir. How's it going so far? It's good. Yeah. You know, just um, going in and doing some things in the morning, fixing soups. And, oh, you're still, you know, still? I'm still. I thought the, re the idea of retirement, retirement is that you stop. Well, at some point, I'll get somebody to take that part of it, but I'm, I also like to eat there, so <laughs> I've been there for that, and uh, just, to, just to let people know that it, that it hasn't, it's not going to change, and you know, we want to keep it, you know, the same vibe, and the, yeah. you know, the feel, and, the, and the, the product, especially, but all those things go together. So you just don't have to be there all day. Right, right, yeah, go and take a nap. <laughs> <laughs> Come over here and chat with you guys. Thank you. Well, um, before before we started the show, you were talking about how you started uh, at Shannon's. Well, if I can back it all the way up to the very beginning, I was just thinking about this. I was working for Tucker Electric, and we were wiring what had been the sports page that are the big 
old cotton warehouse, three level. It's where Garner and Glover is now, right up, back up from Turner McCall. A friend of mine came in and said, have you eaten pizza upstairs? I said, disco pizza? He said, listen to me, this is mellow mushroom pizza, but it's upstairs, and I'm still trying to figure this out. He said, what <coughs> basically happened was that mellow mushroom was looking for people and so they could expand, mm -hmm. and uh, Mr. Wright, who owned the facility, made a deal with them so they would have the same dough product and basically the sauce. And so I went up there that night to check it out, and there was one waitress, one cook, and me. So, and I'm sitting around, and so the lady, I, and it was a friend of mine, she said, we need a manager. And I said, oh, whoa, I don't know anything about you know, a restaurant. And she said, well, I'll, I'll get an application. So she got me an application, and I just kind of looked at it and said, I don't want to do this. So she turned it around and started, all right. She filled it out for me. This was in 78. Turned it in. The next day I was hired, <laughs> and here we are. So now, you, were, you were forced to be a manager against your will? Mm, uh, well, kind of. I couldn't say no to, to her. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Sally Hall. And, um, you know, it just kind of grew on from there. And then um, I, I, got, I got a little burnout. I was doing, you know, every, you know six days a week, all day long. And, uh, and then Shannon... Uh, well, I, I went downstairs to the uh, where the restaurant was downstairs and worked there for a little while. And then Shannon from Shannon said, "We need somebody that can just run the food bar back there." And you, I'll give you don't I, remember I, Shannon. <coughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. so, I so, do. Yeah. Anyway, so I was. He left me with that from you know, and I had I borrowed I think two thousand dollars and I. I bought a big ice chest and some utensils and two used refrigerators. That's what took up all that money. And um, so from June to December, I did that and then decided, you know, it was time to move on. And uh, we got my brother and I incorporated and then we, you know, went over to um, National City Bank and uh, to, to I guess I'd borrowed the first amount of money from them, and, and my brother and I went over there, and, and they said, "We really don't want to loan you that because <laughs> there's nothing, nothing. You know, Broad Street's dead." So Charlie went to his bank, or where, where he had been working, and no problem, you know. And then so here we are, and uh, wow, that's the start of it. So that was seventy, uh, eighty-one, eighty-one, yeah. And that was when we, and it's, what's interesting, you remember Billy Parrish. Billy, uh, yeah. everybody was saying, go to the mall, go to the mall. Broad Street's dead. And Billy said, you got all the parking at night you could ever shake a stick with. You know, you could, or at whatever the, in, um, you know, back then it was just the one side. Those, those the, the, right. the, the, yeah, the walls. Uh, and we seated 48 people and uh, probably had, you know, I know we had nachos. We had not found potato skins yet. Um, this had to the roast beef relief and the crummy pita and the, about five or six songs. And of course, as the years went by, the more and more uh, were evolved. And so when you say the mall, that's not? Not River Bend. I don't think, yeah, they're talking about, well, it may have been. I River mean, Bend. Okay. Because Mount Berry Square wasn't there. No, it was River Bend back in the day. Okay. Where, where the shopping center were Ross's and Longhorns, that was River Bend. Because they had the movie theater there. Yeah. Where Ross, Longhorns, not Longhorns, Outback, the bookstore, oh, Boys right. Nobles, all of that right. was where River Bend was. Yeah. Really? Well, anyway. Because they had, I went to see Star Wars there. I, that's funny. <laughs> So I, I got a question though. Yeah. So was food part of your pack? And you said you was working at electrical, you were doing electrical work. So was food something that was? Food? Well, I had never thought about it. And you know, that, that opportunity came my way. And you know, I, I grew up in a big family and we, we ate a lot and cooked a lot. And I realized, you know, of all the, I, when I got out of 
you know, high school. I was kind of floundered a little bit trying to find what I needed, and one day I stepped into this, and here it is. Mm. You know. And that's what I find kind of shocking because you're known, you know what I mean, the sandwiches y'all have, the creative name, the food obviously is good, you have a lawyer following. Mm, thank you. And so I, I just, knowing you just kind of stumbled into it, it's just mm -hmm. kind of surprising to me because I, I was thinking it was just a passion of yours. Well, it, 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 was, is. it was at home. Yeah. You know, <laughs> make some funky stuff. <laughs> and it. Some turned out and some didn't. Yeah. But um, yeah. Now, when I... When I moved to Rome, I think you had already expanded, mm -hmm. but it was, it's hard to imagine that Schroeder's was once half the size that it is now. Yeah, I, I can't. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so I mean, this, this is something that, that fascinates me because, I mean, Schroeder's is great. But businesses like this don't have a history of lasting this long. Uh, they just they just don't. I mean, restaurants tend to mm -hmm. to last a few years, maybe. I mean, some last longer, obviously. But and Schroeder's has survived a lot of change downtown. I mean, and things are thriving right now. Mm -hmm. But there were periods where downtown really was, you know, kind a of a ghost town. Yeah. So. Well, when I opened, you know, I was like the, the sixth restaurant on Broad Street. Now there's 20 what? Mm. You know, there was the Bumblebee Cafe, which you can you know, count it or not, and then, then the Partridge <laughs> and the Crystal, the Coffee Cup on up the street, and I think Don Russo had, had Don's Pizza, and that might have been it. But that was before the streetscape, and mm. before, because um, that came in 85. Wow. And, uh, I and mean, Broad Street's amazing. We have people that come to town that just marvel you know, what, that all is going on down here. And, um, you know, and Arnold was awesome. Amanda Carter's doing a great job now, and I think it but will be, it, we'll help, be here a while. Help me understand what has kept Schroeder's going all this time. Because we've seen restaurants come and go yeah. on Broad Street since we've been doing oh, this. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's, it's been quite a few well, that have come and gone. You uh, all the you, ones you, you named tell me. All are gone. <laughs> so, I, well, uh, yeah. So what, I mean, what do you think? I, there's a demand for a product and we're putting it out there. It's just, and you haven't changed much. I mean, uh, Schroeder's has not changed much. I mean, the, the menu has changed a little bit here and there, but... Yeah, things uh, have been added to, but... You know, whatever, when something was made and it was fixed, that was it. And we, you know, um, you know, we found, just luckily found the, the right pita bread to work for those sandwiches. And that, <laughs> when there was, you know, there's thicker, you go looking for pita bread. A lot of them would never work like that. Because yeah. what we did was just split it. And then, so it just works out, you know, very well. Well, it's a, it's a remarkable this boy to it today. Story. Well, I, I I know what he's not saying is that his his own personality I think has a lot to do with it. Yeah. It was always a very welcoming place. It was a. Um, yeah. This boy too, because I was just before we was on the air, I was talking about how I brought some students from Atlanta, um, from my robotics team in Atlanta, from the 100 Black Men of Atlanta, and we went and I took them to Schroeder's, and to this day, and it's been. Ten years ago, and to this day, <laughs> their coach still talks about how they talk about coming and eating at Schroeder's. How it was just different, and how their perception of Rome coming from Atlanta was not—you know—it was—it wasn't—it was different for them coming from Atlanta. But how they really enjoyed sitting there, and we was having fun and eating at Schroeder's, and the service was great, and that awesome. still sticks with them. Mm -hmm. And most of them are now in college and even graduate some of them. And so, so it's it's. The food is great, but it is a very welcoming space. Well, I, I think that has a lot to do with it, and and you know that that's the case. And I, it's it's, I think it's partly your personality, but well, also, uh, just the the attitude of the place is, you know, a, a, it was family. You were part of. Well, it kind of has that Cheers 
you know, it's kind of like they all people feel like it is part of theirs. It's been for so many people, it's mm -hmm. been their their whole life. Yeah. They've come in yeah. there since they were babies. I mean, so. We want to talk more about that. We have to uh, go away briefly for for this break, but I, I we will be back with more. And I want you to go away, so stay with us. Welcome back to Community Watch. We're talking with John Schroeder of Schroeder's New Delhi, uh, who has recently retired, although you're still making the soups. Mm -hmm. That's oh, good. I get somebody, surely I can teach somebody to do that. <laughs> I might want to, I don't know. Anyway, but um, we do have a general manager. Who, when you ask me who that is, you... Well, I'll ask you that now. Uh, <laughs> Teresa Haney. <laughs> <laughs> Teresa worked with me for several years and took a couple of years off, or a year off, and um, I just felt like it was the right time. I wanted, you know, got her back in the program, and she's she's something else. So she's prepared to, to stay there the, the next 40 years? I hope so. <laughs> Somebody needs to be there. <laughs> <laughs> well, what is it, what is it, um, what is it like to, because you have been in that that restaurant on that spot for nearly what, 30, 30, did you say 38? 38. 38 years. Right. So you've had the experience of having generations mm -hmm. uh, of customers and you know people who went there as as kids mm -hmm. got married and now they're yep. with their own kids and maybe grandkids. And people who met there for the first time they've been married. I mean, there's just lots of fun stories back and forth. <coughs> so is that, I mean, is that something that you have been aware of? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, what is it, what is it like to see the kids of your regular customers come in? Is that, and she's like, well, I mean, it's just kind of normal that you see them grow up. That's what they do. <laughs> Might have grown up. You know, I remember when when Brian was two years old, uh, he would be crawling on the Pac-Man watching the <laughs> Pac-Man go and, in his diaper. And, uh, at one point, maybe a year after that, he had older kids coming in and watching him actually play the Pac-Man. And uh, they'd put their quarters on, the, and they were learning from him. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You remember Pac-Man? Yeah. 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 Right. I was good at Pac-Man. Yeah. <laughs> I got a question. Though, I'm thinking about, because it is a, I think it is a combination of things that's made Schroeder so successful, but how did you come up, because your menu is a little, it's, I guess in the 70s it's been funky. It's a little different. It's yeah. funky, the sandwiches when you first go in mm -hmm. there, the name of the sandwiches. So how did it all come about? Um... Well, I tell you, the, the first sandwich, you know, the roast beef relief, Shannon, who owned Shannon's, came walking out from the back and said, roast beef, roast beef relief, you can call it that and you can have it. I said, okay. Then in the Peter Max, obviously, is a, you know, Peter Max, the uh, artist, mm -hmm. had a kind of, I don't know, you know, get play on words, and the Salvador Deli, and the, the crummy pita was, you know, they just happened along the way. I didn't sit down and brainstorm. Man, God, what are we going to call this thing? Started eating it. Like, yeah, this is good. This is a crummy pita. Yeah. But it's worked. <laughs> it's worked. <laughs> I don't know. You know. Well, that that had to have happened at the very beginning because the names have been there. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, there's, you know, they're the same building blocks of the same thing, but it's just what you've added to it, and, and it changes it completely. Because I'm wondering how many, 
young people come in there for the first time and order a sandwich and don't even have an idea to play on no name. Right. You know, how many of them, yeah. how many of them are exposed to it by, by the sandwich? Mm-hmm. Because, uh, what is the Hoagie Carmichael? I mean, yeah, well, there you go. Who, what's, <laughs> you know, if you're a certain age, I just don't know that you know that. Or that there's something yeah. that you, that's just conscious with you. Mm-hmm. And then when you come in there, I wonder how many people, because I know I've done it, you go and you look at the name and now you're trying to figure out what is it from, you know, what, what does this mean? Mm-hmm. And so uh, I can just see that for a lot of young people coming in and, you know, you order it, you don't want to say, I don't know. But in the mind, you're wondering, what yeah. is this about? What is, what's this name mean? Interesting. Oh, you're overthinking it. When was it? <laughs> when was it? <laughs> when did the, the courtyard become a part of it? We opened in 81. I'm, I'm thinking it would be around 83. So, so was it there? When you expanded, or was it there before you expanded? Not before. No, after we had expanded. It, it may have been a couple of years after that. I'd, I'd have to call Charlie up, and it's gonna, he, he can remember. Um, was that something you wanted for, for the music option? Well, sure. Yeah. Because yeah. it uh, seems to me for quite a while, Schroeder's was the venue for, I mean, it's still probably mm-hmm. the best venue, but there, uh, it was about the only place you could hear live music. I'm trying to think. I know, of course, Shannon's was still going on, right. and then the River's Edge, the change there. And, um, well, where the brew house has been, there was there were several kind of rotations of owners that had, you know, music in there, uh, one of which I can't talk about on TV, <laughs> With, <laughs> how it ended, sadly. <laughs> oh, well, I, I guess we'll have to talk about that later. <laughs> <laughs> yep, because I saw the pictures. Okay. I, I don't have them, though. <laughs> <laughs> well, you've had some pretty impressive musicians over the years. Yeah. Not the least of which is your own band. Heck yeah. yeah. So who were some of the ones you you remember the most? Boy. Well, Glenn Phillips has always been one of my favorite. And uh, the Supreme Court, which is Jeff Calder from the Swim Pool Cues, and they've combined into one band. And they blew, you know, they, it's the same four guys, but uh-huh. they play both, you know, Glenn's all instrumental. Supreme Court is vocal and very clever. Uh, they're not love songs. Well, maybe one <laughs> that you can count on it. Um, Derek St. Holmes, who used to play with whoever did Cat Scratch Fever. Uh, Ted Nugent? Yeah. Is that, yeah. I th- yeah. yeah. Uh, he was, he, yeah, he's awesome. He's an incredible guitarist. Um, you know, there's all these other great bands. Well, Scatter Smother and Covered, of course. So. Um, the okay. Beatles. Uh, I remember the Beatles. Uh, um, the, the, um, and we had to change the name of that one. This next one was, uh, gosh, I was thinking of that name. It was the Huge Organ Trio, but that one didn't. Some people had some issues with that one. I think we uh, changed was, it to another name. I can't remember. <laughs> I'll, I'll think about it. Um, I don't know. You know, it's just, in an, over the, the past few years, I've let, you know, Danny that works for me, she's been doing all these events out there. Mm. And of course, we have poetry night. We don't want to leave that out. Oh, no. And uh, you were foolish enough to allow poetry night to start there, and it's, it's been over 30 years for mm-hmm. poetry night. Well, you know, the first time that happened, I thought there would be five or six little, little ladies, you know, <laughs> hickory mm. dickory dock or whatever, you know. It was packed. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> oops. <laughs> Uh, wow. So you've poetry night's yeah. been there that long? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I mean, I just, I, I guess what my thing is that when you think, when I think about Schroeder's, I just think of it's like an artsy place. You know, it's a place, an artsy place where you mm-hmm. can eat. Uh, I don't just think about, like you said, let's go to this restaurant. I just think it's more of an artsy place, like living art. And mm-hmm. the whole vibe of it, to me, is part of that. It's that uh, kind of throwback, you know, it's a... Uh, 
still some of that seventies vibe in there and all of that. I mean, I just mm -hmm. think it's a very cool place just to go eat. Well, thank you. Yeah, honey. not so much. Let's just go to this restaurant. Is it? Let's just. It's like a place you want to go hang out, not just eat and leave. Just yeah, kind of hang out. And and the staff. I I know over the years when I've gone in, the staff that y'all must do a great job of kind of hiring people to kind of fit that motif and kind of can understand what the whole purpose because I think that it's critical to mm -hmm. carry that out that your staff be able to do that and y'all just do a great job with that. Thank you. Um, you know, I'm, I'm familiar enough with Schroeder's that I can think of several of your staff, of your uh, waiters and waitresses that kind of grew up too mm -hmm. at Schroeder's. Well, you can, you're talking about Brian Mullins and Sarah Ann and uh, Grand Graham Duke. Those that that was a threesome, and gosh, they, they they're all gone now. But I, Brian yeah. hadn't gone that long. But no, <laughs> no. <laughs> but uh, it always seemed like a place where, and I know this is true. You took chances on some hiring some people that didn't have a lot of experience. Uh, and, you know, I appreciate that. I appreciate that. Well, it's just assembly, and you follow some directions, and pretty well got it. Well, but still, I think you gave a lot of people their first experience w with a job. Mm. Well, sure. Yeah. yeah. Um, Franchise. I mean, because that's huge nowadays. That's, we don't want to go there right now. <laughs> so, because, you know, you just well, see it. So. I know. We try that. You know, we, we'll talk about that later. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think, it, I think it says a lot about your accomplishment that it wasn't as easy to reproduce as maybe mm. people thought it would be. Exactly. Um, so uh, I, I, I think that's... That's an important thing to say about Schroeder's is that mm. you gave the impression that this is a simple thing that, that anyone could just do, but it really wasn't that simple. Um, I believe that. Yeah, because you yeah. think you just you can just plop it down and it'll just work, but yeah, yeah, yeah. it's more to it than yeah. just that. And is the... I know Sam's place in our Murchie has kind of morphed into something that's a little different. Well, you know, it's just two, it's two and one yeah. is basically what it is. Yeah. And I go out and hang out with Sam from time to time. Now that I have time. I, right. Yeah. I, yeah. And that's I like, uh, Sam's a great guy. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, he's, he's, he's created a, an icon in, in, in our Murchie. <laughs> <laughs> That's an oxymoron. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> but yeah. yeah. We've yeah. got to take another break here. When we come back, we'll talk a little more with John Schroeder, so don't go away. Your life is filled with opportunities to show the world you can take charge. It's waking up each day with a mission. It's working each day toward a goal. It's choosing to rise. It's charging forward with a purpose. It's changing the course of your life and taking charge of your future. If you're ready to be a Take Charger, enroll at Georgia Highlands College today. Welcome back to Community Watch. We've been talking with John Schroeder of Schroeder's New Delhi, recently retired. And uh, Schroeder's is Continuing as always, but but you have a little more time than you used to. Yes, have. sir. And congratulations thank on you. retiring. Thank you. Thirty eight years. Yeah. Yep. And thank you for doing so much for Rome. I, it may not have been your intent, but that's what happened. But it happens. So I'll tell you, it's, it's it's all good. Uh, yeah. All right, we gotta we gotta leave. Thank you for being with us. Thank you. This is it's been kind of good to. Pull all this back in and think about it. It's <laughs> it's it's been a, it's a, it's amazing uh, to me. Uh, thank y'all for joining us, and we'll see you next time on Community Watch. Mm -hmm.